All right. This meeting is being recorded. I've never had that before. That's awesome. Uh, hey, welcome, dear listener. Hey, if you are first time listener, I just want to thank you for being here. We've done some outreach uh, through Twitter and such. And so I feel like we got a few extra uh, new guests with us today. So I'm so uh, blessed that you would be here with us today. If you are a repeat listener, maybe this is the second or 200th episode that you've listened. Uh, just so thankful for you. Uh, as you've listened throughout the now year and a year and a half that we've been doing the Connections podcast, we've had coaches from uh, literally around the world. And we've noticed <laughs> We've noticed a common theme, right? Uh, selflessness, um, nothing getting in their way, dogged attitude. Uh, it's just amazing the, 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 the gumption and what coaches do and go through. And today we've got a really special coach with a really special situation that kind of embodies all of that together. So help me welcome today's guest from Dayton, Kentucky High School, Mr. Jesse Herbst. Jesse, how are you, sir? Very good. Thanks. Don't doing great. Thanks, Bill. Awesome, man. I'm so happy you're here, man. We uh, we've been planning this for a while, and then uh, you know my travel got in the way and school and everything else. But uh, I've been looking forward to sitting down and talking with you, man. This is uh, I think this is going to help expand coaches' vision, if you will, out there that that listen to today and and the things that you and your program have done recently. So the reason we invited Jesse, besides he's an awesome track coach, that's always like a prerequisite. If you're a track coach, you get to be on the, on the podcast. But I was perusing through Facebook about, I guess it was probably two to three months ago now, and an official who I'm so terrible that I don't remember the official that posted it. Buddy Dennis. Is that who? Okay, thank you. I'm yes. so, I felt so bad. I, like, I don't get to give props to the guy that help put us together, Buddy Dennis. So Buddy posted in the USATF officials Facebook page about this high school, Dayton High School uh, track meet, but there was something special about it. Th there was no track. <laughs> now you, you might think that's a prerequisite, but we're going to learn today from Jesse how he didn't let the absence of a track stop him from hosting a home track meet. So Jesse, talk to us. First of all, give us an overview of the high school. Uh, how many students? Uh, there's no track. Was there ever a track? How long have you been the coach there? And kind of lead us up to this, this interesting track meet you did. Our high school is a small, small, classy high school. We're about 400 students. Uh, no track, never had a track here. Uh, track facilities are pretty much in nil. Uh, uh, track has always been a very popular sport here, very successful track history here. Our track history we had here for, wow, uh, 25 years, uh, Barry Bank, I'll go back to in a minute. Uh, he's never had a track his whole career. He coached here. He's coached at uh, St. Henry before they had a track. He coached at Simon Kim with me the past 15 years before I came here. Never had a track. And he has a former state champions, I think, than anybody out there. I mean, wow. He's an amazing, amazing coach. But uh, uh, the, the, the street meet itself was easy because I grew up here in Dayton. And our workouts are around the block where we always where we have the track meet at. Our campus is two block campus. We have our elementary school and our high school. But in between there is a big old paper factory. Uh, so around the block, the paper factory in the elementary there is 600 meters. So we did a lot of 600 meter repeats. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of training there. That's where we do all our stuff. Uh, it's uphill. It's downhill. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's different. You know, it's, it's not a huge upgrade, but it, it's, it's, it's significant. Uh, so with the street meet itself, they talked about it for 30, 40 years. You know, the old, old man coach Banklin, those guys always talked about it. Uh, I coached with him for 10 years when I came back from, from college and I was from Simon Kenton, and, uh, we talked about it then. And so I came back here two years ago to be the head football coach and took the head track coach, obviously, you know, it was a package deal. And so my assistant who was assistant for the old guy, and I worked from, you know, 15 years, 20 years ago, said, hey, you're back. Let's do the street meet. And I said, you know what? Why not? Uh, we wanted, we already started because we wanted to, we have no facilities. We have no jump pit. We have no, I mean, we have, we have a street. And we got outside, and we marked the street, the cars come, we pull hurdles out of the way and we put them back on. Oh, uh, the goodness, we're right, we're right by the flood wall though. So most of our street around the school is just a few cars. It might be a student coming off campus, might be employees, somebody come off campus, but you know, a parent pick up, but not a whole lot of traffic, but it's enough that we got to stop half dozen, 12 times to, you know, to have a practice session to, Car, you know, game yeah. off, game that's what, on. That's what I say. It makes me think of that old, uh, you know, street, <laughs> street hockey and street right. football. Like, and guard, game right. off. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's a running joke here. So, 
Uh, but but long story short, uh, we've always trained in the streets and always worked in the streets, but we didn't have facilities, so I, I went to build a long jump in. I, I'm a big triple jump nut. I love the triple jump. Yeah. I think triple jump's an amazing event. It's just, I can never do it. <laughs> never dream because I can't do it now. Uh, but I had a lot of success with, with, with a really good coach out of Simon McKenton uh, before I came here. So when I got here, I went to build a jump pit, and I went to my administration, and right outside our weight room is an area about Eh, 15 feet 14 feet wide to the curb in the street there and it's probably about 50 60 feet long but it runs along the outside of the campus like next to the street next to our weight room and the sidewalk kind of l's kind of got the l shape there so right where it l's it goes up to the weight room you can go straight and walk into the grass so i just grab my you know, assistant superintendent i said hey mr kemet can i can i build a long jump pit here he said a what Along a big giant hole full of sand, a giant sandbox. And he goes to me, smiled, he goes, ah, I don't care. I did go, go ahead, coach. That was wow, that was easy. So I immediately grabbed spray paint, went out, measured it off, grabbed a shovel, and started digging. The, the, really the next day. Wow. So I'm out there digging the next day, and a couple of people drove by and said, Coach, what, what are you doing? So I'm I'm working on a long jump pit here. I said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to dig this thing out. I said, how big? I said, it's going to be you know, nine feet wide, probably about 30 feet long. Well, how deep? I said, well, I hope you get about a foot. So how far you get down there? And he goes, you can do it by shovel? I went, I got 30, 40 football guys. We're going to dig this out with me. I, nice. I, I'm ready to go. He goes, you're crazy. Hold off. I got a bobcat. I'll be oh, back. Oh, good. Yeah. I came back the next day, and I thought he'd be out there. Instead, I had the city out there with the bobcat. City guys showed up, and they started digging it. They seen how they heard about it, so they all showed up. And we dug it all out with a bobcat. It was amazing. Everybody pitched in. And from there, it took off. Mm. And there we went, wow, look at this. We can have long jump, triple jump here. Yeah. We had the baseball field. Our campus is really nice because our school's next to the flow ball. We had the, the, the 600 block race around the elementary right next to us here. And then there's a big city park with baseball field, softball field, tennis courts, basketball courts, all that stuff. So I said, we can throw a discus right in the baseball field. There's our cage. So we went out in the dirt. <laughs> I got a stick and a string. <laughs> Whatever feet it was, it was my feet. And I got there and made my, you know, made my, my circle and came back, spray painted the circle, put our vectors in, wow. spray painted them across the baseball field there. And we threw discus off the dirt. I was, I was like, no brainer. This is great. Shot put, we dumped the street. We have a lot of little sidewalks, side streets there. So in uh, several lots around our school, big grass lots there. So we, Spray paint a big circle right down the middle of the street. As you were building these, first of all, start, I love that is, the superintendent just had a lot of trust in you and said, go. I also love that you didn't second guess them. You're like, oh, okay. And you just went and did it like before he can change his mind. I, I love that. You know, as, I, as you were building these, are the kids like are getting excited? Are they kind of like, oh, uh, mad? They want to know what crazy old Herbst is doing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The mad scientist. What are you doing? What over are you there? doing, coach? I'm, I'm building a giant <laughs> sandbox, a big cat box. All these stray cats can come over here and go to the bathroom, guys. That's what I'm doing. And they, all, they all make fun of me. And, but at the end, they're all, I mean, they're, they're all impressed because I, I don't want to say anything. Uh, the, the community has, uh, it's a challenged community, very challenging community economically. We have, we have, we have, we have some issues. And we don't have a whole lot of nice new facilities and new stuff. And when we bring new stuff in, the kids get excited. Like we read the locker rooms when I got here with the football team. That was a huge on taking, but we had all alumni. Everybody donated. They came in, did the work. It cost five thousand dollars for a hundred thousand dollars worth of work. Uh, but <clears throat> but the new stuff, the kids you know, get excited. You know, it's yeah. something new, something different. But again, what's what's I've been here two years, so they're still trying to figure me out. Right. I was here, right. born and raised here, graduated, went to college, played football, came home. Coach here another 10 years and then left hmm. for another school. Been gone 15 years, had a lot of success out there, and now I'm back home. Right. So that's kind of you know, the, the short story. We'll get to that kind of stuff later. So yeah. the kids still trying to figure out who I am. Yeah. My family name, my whole family went here, and you know, I'm the youngest of three. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. But again, we're, we're kind of just kind of going around going, we, we can, place we can practice, things we can do. Right. And so we're talking about, hey, if we did a street meet, this is where we can do it. And then we can, and it kind of just it progressed from there. So, and then so we just pulled the trigger and took off. Did you, when you, so, so let's go over the events that you did. So you got a okay. sand pit. So you got a long jump and triple jump. Uh, I heard the baseball field for discus. Yeah. I heard uh, kind of off the sidewalk into the grass for shot put. 
Did I, did yep. I hear, hear that correct? And you had a 600 meter loop. So there you can do four by 600s. There's probably a hundred meter or maybe, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't assume what yes. kind of straight away or hurdles. Well, did you have? I went and I called coach Bank, my, 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 ace, my, you know, the old guy. And I said, I need your wheel. You know, I said, I always had a measuring. Ah, the wheel. <laughs> so I got the old wheel out and I just started experimenting. Okay. So I walked around and went, okay, it's 600 meters. We always wondered how big this, we did a million these repeats growing up. I mean, it was four, three quarters full of everybody. He's like kills on these things. You know, how far we always guesstimate. I guess we had 600 meters, 800 meters. I mean, just, this thing is a monster. And so I got here. I was like, wow, it's 600 meters. Like, it was like, it was like 601, like almost, almost spot on. Uh, so then I started experimenting. I wanted a common finish line. So right. they just made things easier versus a like common starting line. Then we're moving near the timers and everything else. So right. I started walking things off. And in the way we did it growing up, we always ran backwards. So on a track, you always run counterclockwise. But yeah. here we always ran clockwise. We were always trained on this block. It's just the way we always did it. Huh. So when I first started setting it all up, I set it up going clockwise. And I was like, man, I, I don't like it at all. You know, this, this, this doesn't make sense at all to me. You know, this, this is track. We're going to go the other way. Uh, so, you know, I just started, and I ended up coming up with, instead of a four by eight, we ran a four by 12. Ah, two laps, right. Yeah. Two laps. So I was uh -huh. like, you know, so we're not going to do the exchange in. I went right down the middle of the street between the school and the elementary, nice flat street there, a, a third street. And right in the middle of the street, I put down a start and finish line mm -hmm. for all the relays. And we put cones off, walk cones off either way so that her exchange ends. Wow. <laughs> it kept it real simple. So no blind, everything was open. Mm -hmm. you know, there was no blind exchange to worry about. No, no lanes, no right. spikes. Right. You know, that's kind of why I sold it. No lanes, no spikes, no blocks. You know, it's the first meet of the year. Generally, we get cold, cool weather around here. So mm -hmm. sprinting is not very conducive at that time of year. You know, 100 and that kind of stuff and hurdles. Let's, let's not push it. Uh, so I, I went to go four by eight. Right. Uh, do me four by 12. Uh, we did the uh, set of four by four at the end. We did a four by six, mm -hmm. which was great. We did the mile, mm -hmm. we did the half, we did the two mile, did the quarter mile, which is interesting because it was start uphill, then you come across the fast straight and you finish downhill. Everything you finish a little downhill grade. When you say quarter mile, an actual like close to 400 meters or just oh, it's 400 meters? Uh, okay, so you measured that part out. So, measured that. You so say we would start and stuff. Yeah, okay. Right. So, we, and we, basically the starting line would move to where it mm -hmm. needed to move to, depending on what corner we were starting on or what. Right. And I went around spray painting everything. And yeah. the city worked with me great. I went to the city, told them what I wanted to do. Yeah. They said, they didn't bad nice and signed everything. Two days before they called me and said, we got a problem. Oh no. We're on a major state interstate here where a bus route comes through. And they said, You gotta move your meat. It's a state route. We can't close it. I went, I don't know what to tell you, boys, man, but all of this oh, no. is motion. This happens in two days. We can't change it. Uh, went up to there, we're all ready to go and fight the fight. And they came to the door and they I forgot how they figured it out, but something simple was like, oh no, no brainer. Wow. So they made sure all the cars were towed or gone. I think we had to tow two cars. Everybody moved their stuff. I was around. I was around for two weeks, putting signs up, putting notes in people's cars. Be ready to move. It was just that was my biggest fear. Sure. <clears throat> you know, all these cars be there. Somebody wanted the car and get out. Mm -hmm. But a few cars have driveways. We did. I'll tell the story later. We had a car pull out right in the middle of the meet. It was kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! That, oh god! We're in the two miles. We're we're at the end, man. We're we're, we're we're you know we're almost there and just oh no. Uh but anyway, so we did those races. Uh, then we did a four by one. Oh, then yeah. We did, a, we did a shuttle. So I used, like, for example, the finish line was the crosswalks. Okay. So the front line of the crosswalk there, as you come down, I had to go over and tape it and repaint it myself. Make it all nice and clear there. So, but that was our finish line. So the common finish line, right. the starting line was, was a mark. And I, I spray painted the thing across there. Uh, it looked, I mean, it wasn't like all crappy, you know, but yeah. it was what it was. Um, but the four by one, we did a shuttle. So at the end of each street, the crosswalks were our takeoff or launch zones, right. we would call it there. So I put them on the back one to hit the front one, you can go. We put cones down the middle of the street and ran two teams at a time. And it might have been the event of the day. Wow. People loved it. They lined the streets. It was like race cars, man. People were going crazy. They were going back and forth, sprinting, and just it was a really neat, neat setup. I was like, what was going to do a shuttle? Like so, when we were kids, you know. And we still passed the baton. So they had, they had to pass the batons right. and went by and still take it from each other. What, what what other events? So you said no hurdles, which as a hurdle, no hurdles. Guy, that hurdles. hurdles. I, so I basically, expect, I was expecting a six hundred hurdle or something. Man. Next year, I'm bringing on the uh, steeplechase. Oh yes, got to figure it out. My my superintendent coming. He's making a runner track kind of because well, what do you do about the kids fall and scrape their hands on you? We're not on a track. We're on the street and asphalt. I said, you know what? I get the old rubber four from, from the old locker room all stacked up in the back. 
interlocking like a puzzle. I'll put those down. He went, yeah, good. So I'm going to get a couple of inflatable swimming pools. Oh, man. <laughs> inflatable swimming That's pools. Awesome. My buddy, co- coach of bigger schools that have the hurdles. The kids love steeplechase. It's a sell. It's the best distance event there is. No, Exactly. No, yeah. And those kids go crazy. Every time we go to the place they have, everyone's, I, I get guys run 100 meters. Can, can I do it? <laughs> You're a 100 meter guy. I don't care. <laughs> so it's a sell point, you know, just, you know. Yeah. So, uh, Jesse, this is a lot of work. And, you know, track, which has many, many, many positives, right? I mean, we're in the track world. There is no greater sport than track and field. Uh, maybe football is a close second since you're a football. Close player. second. Close but, second. Uh, track it. and field. <laughs> well, you know, one of the maybe sometimes negatives for track and field is we're, we're, we're really technical, right? Like the 100 meter dash. I mean, when you go to, you know, I just came back from NCAA championships. And right now, when you're listening to this, we're in the middle of the Olympic trials. You know, they're, they're measuring out the 100 meter dash to the, 0.01, the, the hash marks for the hurdles, uh, the, the steeplechase heights, the exchange. I mean, we're real, real technical. And, you know, 99% of the tracks out there that are, you know, that are out there, real, you know, tracks are, are measured correctly. And sometimes we're so traditional in track and field, we say, well, you can't do a four by one as a shuttle, Jesse. Come on, that's not a four by one. That's a, that's a shuttle. So you shouldn't even do that because you can't qualify for state or, or conference or anything with this stuff. You put in so much work. Why? Why? <laughs> Every meet you go to is the same. That's what I've discovered. Every meet I go to, I get the same events in the same order. I get the same schools with the same kids. And most of the time I get the same result. It's over and over again. And the kids know it's monotonous. Uh, years ago, I was at Simon Kenton. We had a, a county championship. You know, it's just the three county schools. And it was uh, Dixie, Simon Kenton, and Scott. And it was a great little try meet. Instead of going all, everybody wants an invitation all these days. Everybody's, right. you know, got the money gray. We've got to make money and everything. So, but it was a great meet. But the other counties around us all had a full county championship. And the other guy says, man, we, we got to make our full county. I said, don't do it. Don't change the format. You do, you're going to regret it, guys. It's just another meet. Right. But we did it, and it became just – we had a traveling trophy. It was really, and it was all bright right three of us. It was a neat little fun thing. The kids let – and you can run all your kids. At Simon McKenna, I had 150 kids on the track team. Wow. I had a dynasty, boys and girls. It was amazing out there. We had a, just a numbers out there. It's a giant school with 2,000 students. Uh, but I can take them all, and we can all run that meet. You know, it's so hard to meet. Every other day I have a meet. I'm saying to coach somewhere this meet or that meet. Right. I didn't coach track at Simon again. I was logistics. I moved kids. I scheduled events. I did everything else. Right. I coached my relay teams, and that's about all I got to have to do. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but uh, I lost my train of thought. Well, I was asking though why to put all this work into. Oh yeah. I mean, it's different. It's just yeah. the same. same it's the same old meet. Yeah. Same, and so this, this this is something different. And that's why I sold it to them again. No spikes, no blocks. You know, no lanes. Yeah. Just go out in the street and race. Everybody's worrying about their time. My PRs, my this, my that, drives me nuts. Let's just go race. Yeah, race and the time take care of themselves. Yeah, it's amazing. You, Watch the times come out to. Did you notice that? That's a good point because again, you're right. We get because everything's measured the exact same. We run the events in the same format. Uh, right. Maybe most of the time our relays are running the same legs and things like that. Did you notice now that the kids? They didn't have a 400 meter dash. They had a one lap, which was maybe a roughly a 600 meter dash. Did you notice them focusing more on beating the kid next to them versus exactly. what's my exactly all that? Yeah, I got so much positive feedback from all the kids because for coming in, they're like, "Oh my God, we're around the streets of Dayton. Dayton <laughs> itself is in the area. We're not. Uh, how do I say? It? Uh, nobody comes to Dayton. There's not a destination here. We're kind of a dead end." Uh, once you get into Dayton here, it goes out to Route 8, which is going to Silver Grove, which has been landslide and closed, so it goes nowhere. <laughs> Above us is a very uh, prominent town, Fort Thomas. They don't come down the hill. Uh, we're out on the river. You know, you know about Dayton, what do you hear about Dayton? So sometimes we don't always have the best rap sometimes. Uh, so the big selling point with kids are like, we're going to go run the streets of Dayton? I had friends at other schools that said, if I brought my kids down there, they, they, they'd fire me, Yes. Oh. If we're gonna come run the streets of Dayton. Are you are you nuts? I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> we're just like you guys. All right. You know, it's not that bad down here. You know, I guess people have an image. It's guns and knives and drugs and bad people. No, it's it's amazing little blue collar town right on the river. But again, it's what you hear about. Nobody's ever come here. It's, right. it's always been that way. <clears throat> so, uh, 
again, one of my selling points was just trying to get bring people today. Hey, come come see our town. Come see us. It's, it's a wonderful spot, right? We'll go there later. But um, uh, so so what was the reaction when you you must have had three, four, five coaching I get eight. that you yeah, wanted? Yeah, I, I had eight like schools that. exactly. I, I reached yeah. out and I had eight schools jump on right away, and I stopped there. And I was afraid to chase any more. I didn't know I could handle. I was like, that's kind of Our big. Have a problem. Yeah, that's not, more than I thought. Right. They weren't big programs. Simon King is a big program. They came in, so I, I, I left there, I think. So, uh, but I said, they're all small schools, and they brought about 20 to 30 kids each. And it was great. We think we can handle 12 to 15 schools, is what we're, we're, we're shooting for this year. What was the other uh, athletes and other coaches' reaction at the end of the meet when they got done throwing the discus on the baseball and the relays? And everybody, I got zero negative feedback on anything out there except for the discus. A few parents, you heard chirping, complaining. I can't believe they're throwing discus off the dirt. We're like, hello, street meat. You know, <laughs> where else are we going to throw it at? <laughs> the alternative is we don't throw the discus. <laughs> right, 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 right. So it was different. Like, my thrower struggled. He's really good. He's raising a runner up. He's doing a state. He's a really good thrower. Oh, he got, wow. He's like, yeah, I struggle, coach. It was a challenge. It was good. Overcome it. Yeah. You know, overcome it. It's just, it's just, this is the playing field we have. Let's go play on it. Right. I mean, did anybody, it's, it's what it is. Did anybody, you, you mentioned your discus thrower who, who was really good and struggled. Did anybody inversely, did anybody like excel because there was no time anxiety? Like it was just competition at that point? You know what? Uh, I mean, it was the first meet of the year. Hmm. Uh, I know the kid from Grant County is a really good thrower. He came out and still kicked butt. It didn't phase him. You know? <laughs> it didn't bother him at all. Yeah. Uh, I just, it, I, you know, it's just a few parents here chirping in the back and I got feedback from other people said, hey, I can hear parents complaining. But outside of that, zero yeah because it was just something different is we weren't chasing our, our times everything's time these days yeah. like when i grew up running track you had regionals then you had sectionals then you had state state was a here we go top eight guys on the track we're head to head one heat let's fit it's head to head now it's you get to state there's 24 kids there i can be state champion for second or third heat if i you know you, you never say you're chasing the clock so everybody's all worried about time and my time and my mark no i never worried about that as a kid yeah did I win? <laughs> <You know? laughs> See, I, I, I like so. that. I like that attitude because you know one of the drawbacks on track and field, and as it relates to culture and society, if if someone doesn't set the world record, it, it's almost like it doesn't matter, right? It's like, right. Oh, well, they won, but yo, oh, what time do they run? Oh, the hundred meter, like maybe at the trials this upcoming two weeks, maybe the winner is going to run nine seventy seven, and someone's going to be like. Yeah, but the world record's nine five or whatever, you know. Right. And instead, like, where's the fun in that? Yeah, because because we don't do that with any other sport. Let's let's use football. A running back runs one hundred and twenty yards. Everybody's like, oh wow, broke one hundred yards. Like that's a that's a big deal. Uh, one hundred twenty yards doesn't get close to the record. It's not the state record for rushing yards in a game or the <laughs> NFL. But no one calls that out. They just go, oh wow, he had a great game, one hundred twenty. 20 yards where if a sprinter on the elite level runs nine, seven, nine, eight, we should be like, Oh, wow. Hey man, they're, they're, that's good. Like, oh, wow. And, and they won. Right. right. Yeah. 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 But so, I, but again, I, I think it's just, it's nature of the beast. It's just, we've become a, it's more technical sport. You have all the technology involved now. Right. Uh, you know, at the timing is, you know, is everything, you know, did you, did you hand time this? I assume. Yes. Oh, heck yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I was not going to, I wouldn't hire anybody. You know, the timer guys, I, I thought about it. It costs too much money to bring those guys in. Sure. Like, you guys charge that much money. I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> you give me a trailer and some stopwatches. Every once in a uh, while, I'll ask the, the real dumb question like that. I was like, yeah, this has to be hand time. Right. 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 Yeah. Like, yes. I think that adds to it though. I kind of like that. Did you give out but, a special, like what were the, um, were there any awards? Like, was there a rock yeah. instead of a medal? No, I, I, I wish we had done some, I, I guess I just got medals and green medals. I, my, my ED is, was the track coach here for about 10 years. Oh, nice. And she's a track nut. And she, her kids were graduating college. She's had so much going on when I came in and we're at Redmond College and they're all graduating now, thank God. Uh, she just didn't want to, do, she just wanted out. And, but she didn't want to hand it off to anybody. So I went to football job. She's like, I, you know, I was like, you know, let's, let's go. Man. Next year I'm bringing her back in. I, I love her. She's a track nut. She, awesome. she, kids, she's empty nester now. She's got four more years of retirement. We're going to get her back in the track. She's, she's amazing. But, but she is a uh, great background. She's a track official. She was my clerk. Awesome. Made it real easy. She can yeah. clerk anything set up. Uh, we hired a uh, my old track coach, a social assistant, and really smart around for here forever. And she did all the awards and scoring. We just hired her back in as another advocate, the student advocate retirement position. And mm -hmm. I said, what to her? She's like, no brainer. And then my assistant coach, he's a starter. 
and a fish himself. Nice. <laughs> so come meet day, I just drive around my golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> Smiled and waved a lot. Hey, yeah. Yeah. I'm the crazy guy who uh, has this out. Right, <laughs> right. What, so, uh, what would you do looking back on it now as you start, you know, you evaluate it because now you're away from it, right? And you're thinking about next year. What would you do differently, whether it's enhancements or, you know, I wouldn't throw on the dirt for discus. I don't know. Anything you thought about for next year? I mean, honestly, uh, no. I mean, Adding to it really right now. I mean, the meat itself, I thought was a complete success. There was not a complaint throwing them dirt. If I can get a portable ring, you know, but between now and then, that'd be that'd be wonderful. That's the only option I have. Uh, but you know, kids know what to expect next year when it comes to treat meat. I'm throwing off the dirt. So that week, got to the infield, right? Practice up because that's what that's what the race calls for. I don't want to change that kind of stuff. I like giving it, you know, that's what it's all about. You know, yeah. coming on just kind of using what you have and going with it. Yeah. But adding on the steeplechase, it's yep. just a sell. Because I want more schools. Because I realized, hey, I can make a little money off this. We made yeah. twelve hundred bucks. Was all done. I was like, we actually made a profit of twelve hundred dollars. This is amazing. Uh, and we gained a nice new long jump pit, and the school bought me a long jump pit cover, yeah. which, was, which was amazing. So now I got you know, a little bit, little bit of facilities and something to work with. Um, but next year, what I want to do is again, I'm trying to sell Dayton. I'm trying to sell our town. At that town, I probably about two hundred people showed that day to come see their spectators you know their, their families who have probably never been to Dayton before right all they've been is what they've heard about Dayton so they come down and they see it's a wonderful great little town and community so this year I want to expand it and I want to bring all the businesses and it's right in the park it's a giant area mm. and have like a taste of Dayton mm. come set your booth up we'll supply them line the booths up there come set your booths up so when they come from us they can walk right into the park get something to eat check out the restaurants do things going on in our town and just kind of just, just make it more of a community event so you know, let's, make let's, something happen today. Let's put a pin in that for just a second because I do want to come back to that. Uh, but you got to tell us. So I, I thought this was the name of the meet, but this I guess this was the slogan. So it's street meat is the name of it. It was the inaugural street meat, right? But tell us what your <laughs> slogan was for the meat. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, I'm trying to sell and make money. I'm trying to, how can I sell t-shirts? Uh -huh. I'm trying to catch you saying, I've been coaching a long time, but what, what's a good catchy saying? I was like, well, we're on the street. And I looked around my, my sister, I said, hey kicking some asphalt <laughs> and his eyes lit up. He's like, Oh my God, it's a no brainer. And then they said, they'll never get it approved. Right. No that's way. what I'm saying. How does that get approved in today's world? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I get my superintendent, you know, I went to him and I showed it to him. And he's like, I, I want the first shirt. I went, we're in. That's awesome. The downside, my niece says, don't buy more than a hundred shirts. You won't sell them. You'll have extra shirts. and be stuck with those. First annual, you'll, you'll eat those shirts. Man, I need to buy 300 of these. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. sell. You, you sold she out said, like in the first said, hour by 10 o'clock. We were out of shirts, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I'll be making sure I buy 300 next year. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I can. Beat, Easy money makers beat me in the street or something like that. Yeah, I love that. that's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, kicking some ass. I actually, I think that's nice. Like, that's I, it. I can't, so, yeah, that's, I, mean, I can't think of anything better. <laughs> I kind of you know, went over the top of the first one, <laughs> so. Jesse, you mentioned about, you know, bringing people to Dayton. Um, you're from there. I mean, when you and I talked, you know, about a month ago about setting this up, you know, it's pretty evident your love for your community. So talk to us. You said you're the youngest of three. You grew up, you went to school there. Talk to me about the community and, you know, how you started there in high school. And then I guess you said you went away for college and came back. Yes. Uh, see, my, my parents went to high school here back in the 60s. I think my dad was 60, 60 and my mom was 61. Yeah, I think wow. about that. Second. Okay. Uh, my dad was a football hero, football star in the town. And uh, my brother's graduated in 84, 86, and then I was 90. Uh, my brother Joe's football stud, big track guy, uh, went on to college, uh, played in Minnesota with the Marine Corps, come back, played again, had a great career. But other brother was a uh, cross country track guy. And growing up as a kid, our dad kind of started the youth football league in our town. It was all football, football nut. And uh, my middle brother uh, it was, they had seizures as a kid. And so the doctors never cleared him to play football. So he always kind of felt shunned and kind of in a way, I'm all man's football, football. So always trying to play his ball man. He got into cross country. Uh, and in high school, he won two state championships and two state runner ups. They were four years in a row, just, wow. just dominated. Uh, but the old man that coached him back then, that's where he got to know Coach Bankley. Okay. So, of course, I'm a little kid. I'm coming along. And, you know, Dad, I went to him. It's my fifth grade year. I said, Dad, I uh, I don't want to play football this year. I want to run across country. 
broke my old man's heart. Yeah. He was like, what are you oh doing? Oh my God. Yeah, this is terrible. I'm like, my brother, first year in state champion. Like, I went to state and watched it all happen. Like, it was amazing. Right. <laughs> so I got my first cross country meet, which was my last cross country meet. <laughs> <laughs> It was down at Grant County. I mean, it had this big giant hill. And I was about halfway up that hill. And real quick, the backstory is my older brother, they call him Catfish. That's his nickname. Old says my dad, we were kids, they all get nicknames. He was a big catfish hunter fan. Mm-hmm. Big handlebar, massive mustache, mm-hmm. and baseball stuff. Yeah. Uh, so long story short, I got the nickname Yellow Belly Catfish. Get the word yellow. Yeah. I'm about halfway up that hill. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, my hamstring. <laughs> where, oh, where, my leg. Where's the football field? I, I, I think I want to. I roll over on the ground and held my leg and, and laid there and said, oh, next day I'd go back to my dad's. Dad, can I get back to football again? <laughs> but that got hey, me introduced I, to Coach. I love that story <laughs> because most people in, in general society would say, oh, you know, cross country is easier. Football's the hardest sport. And you're like, yeah, that cross country stuff. Y'all can have that. I'm going to go back over here. <laughs> You get breaks in football, you know, you get, you get a huddle, you get a stop for a minute, you know, I get, you know, <laughs> this thing don't stop and it's uphill and it's hot. There's no halftime on cross country. No. <laughs> time out, time out, time out. Everybody stop running, right? So anyway, so football is a big, big part of our family growing up and everything else. And, uh, but anyway, I got to meet coach Pinkley then. So uh, going to that, that next spring, I joined the track team in fifth grade. And little tiny little squirt running around, and he took everybody in young. It's where he found success. All the girls were young, and everybody else. And uh, so with that, I guess high school. My brother was catfish. We had two state championships. My brother Joe was a sprinter, and probably should have had a state championship in the hundred. And he uh, wrapped his quads hmm. with ace wrap, and it came right in the middle of the uh, race. He come unwrapped. Oh man. Yeah, so either way, but so we got a lot of track history, a lot, a lot of football history. Really good athletes I live up to. You know, what, my, did you, what did you end up doing in track? I I, I, I ran the 100-meter dash and the 400-meter dash. Not not the two-mile? I thought you would have. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I was a sprinter. I ran the, I, I made my living doing the quarter. There you go. Back in our day where we had to run prelims and finals for I tried to explain the kids. Now, I guess I ran seven races a day. I ran the th- quarter three times. I don't want to hear you got to run the quarter at the end, you sissy. You know, you had four races. Oh, boy. So, uh, yeah, so I, I, I read the 400. I, I love to hate it. You know, it's just. Yeah, buddy. No, so I, I, another story. I never listened to my, my coach. Baker, I never listened to him. I wait until the end. I, I, I was, you know, that guy. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I wait the last 200 meters and I'll run everybody else. Right. And I never lost. I was really good. Hey, if it works, it works. <laughs> no, it did. Because you say, you'll never win the big race. You'll never win when it counts. And the big race came state championship. I went in number one and came out number two. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I didn't get out. I thought he'd catch that kid. You know, that kid was just fast as I was. You know, you don't, you don't know. You know, and I look back now, I tell my kid, you know, I know this to my coach. You know, why these guys <laughs> got to convince them to listen to me somehow. But, right. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so anyway, so high school here, I graduated here in 1990. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, I played football here and uh, in, in track. After high school, I went to Campbellsville College. Yeah. A small little college down in the middle of Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Uh, played football there for four years. And best four years of my life. Didn't have a track team there. Actually, our second year in, me and a couple of the guys went to their football coach and said, hey, man, we want to start a track club. And he shot it down. Because uh, we would not be in the weight room with football year round. Yeah, right. And he wanted to control us and his program. And right. makes sense. I, I understand. It. But uh, so we didn't have track. They have track now. They have a beautiful – it's amazing. I got there in 1990. There were seven buildings, three were condemned. It was rough. Oh man. It was uh it was it was in bad shape. Uh they started football there in 87, basically to try and save the school. Right. And it did. It's amazing now. You know, wow. Just, wow. I came back from there in 90. I blew my knee out actually in, in college. Were, uh, were you a running back or I was strong safety. Strong safety. Mm-hmm. I, was, I played DB. Okay. Uh but I blew my knee out, but just shredded my knee, football backwards, dislocated on the field. And, oh. and uh but I came back, played two more years with that, but I had a medical red shirt. I left there, came back to Thomas Moore, spent a year Thomas Moore. Mm-hmm. And then from there, I got a job coaching at Dayton. My old high school coach called me up, said, pretty much you're done playing now. Uh, why don't you come down and coach coaching DBs? And I was like, you know what? Why not? 
when you were going through college, were you like, were, what were you majoring in? Were you thinking about becoming a? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I wanted to coach. Education yeah, so major. Education major and social studies. Yeah. So you we're all ready to coach. I wanted to yes. go. Did, did that occur before you went to college? Like as you were, you know, maybe senior years, you're starting to think about college more. You're like, yeah, I want to coach. I'm going to go become an education major. Or did it? My, occur? It, it sounds cheesy. I get teased my buddies all the time, but my senior quote was, "I'm going to come back home, coach football, and win." No, it wasn't. Yes, I swear. So here I am. Wow. So this yeah. was, I mean, this was yeah. ingrained in you. Like, oh, I'm going to be a coach. Not I want to be a coach. Oh, I, yeah. I am going I'm to coach. be. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know anything else. I, I'm not a smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything else. I'm, I'm a dumb old football guy, you know? <laughs> what? Uh, first of all, <laughs> no, that's not true. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm playing. Go ahead. <laughs> I know, I know. But w- so what, I, I'm interested in that, that, you know, some people, kind of dumb luck their way into coaching meaning uh like we've had several guests you know uh, you would consider them big time college coaches now who never thought of coaching until like their senior year of college and they were like oh wait i never thought about it my coach wait you get paid for this like i could actually maybe do this like it, that's why i say kind of you know trip their way into becoming a coach right like a passion of yours obviously very early was it uh the coaches you had around you was yes. it a, a tv coach you know you're in basketball land right so there's some big personality hey, i had i had two great coaches growing up uh my football coach dan ritter uh he was here 16 years as the head football coach he kind of got thrust into head coach back when he was 23 years old my sophomore year wow he was a fire oh he was he was mean he was tough mm-hmm. i didn't like him mm-hmm. we did not get along Great story. Uh, I made it through my sophomore year, you know, and my junior year, <laughs> I was a little, I guess, more arrogant than I needed to be, a little more to assure to myself. And he uh, he didn't give me an inch. But anyway, long story short, I'm back at practice. We always had a meeting at the end of practice before we conditioned, and I'm back there talking and goofing off, and he calls me out, 100 push-ups. And I roll my eyes, and it became 200 push-ups. But before the end of the conversation ended, I had about 800 push-ups. So I'm on the ground doing my push-ups, and we do our conditioning. So the team's running, I'm pushing, and head coach always ran with us. And he said backwards. I heard a guy named Dwayne Meyer, good buddy of mine, seen that year. He says, "Coach, somebody was stepping home and breaking ankle." He says, "Ah, nonsense." Blows the whistle. We start running backwards. What happens? Oh no! He steps in a hole. He breaks his foot. Oh. All right. I think I'm on the ground pushing the ground. Funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm an arrogant, I, 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm a turd. You know, I'll say it right there. <laughs> I'm a little turd. I'm laughing my butt off, you know? So I get up, I do all my running, everybody's gone. I drag myself in the locker room. He calls me in the locker room. He's got his foot in a big garbage can full of ice. He's a real mean, tough guy. Hmm. And I walk in there, he says, I'm gonna ask you, ask you one question, son. If you lie to me, you're gone for two weeks. You tell me the truth, it's just one week. I went, oh no. <laughs> of course, I'm a hothead. What I do, and I'll throw my hands up, and I'm being a little typical punk kid. And he says, somebody said you called me uh, a-hole. And I said, no, sir, because you lied to me two weeks. And on that, I kicked the desk. I called him an mf and I started screaming, yelling, you can kiss my butt. Wow. And other coach dragged me out, threw me out of the locker room. I came back the next day, held through my legs, begging, pleading, please forgive me, please. He said, son, clean your locker out, hit the road. Wow. Think better than I. Best thing ever happened to me. Now, best thing ever happened to me. I, I, you know, the burning question for me is did you really call him an a hole? I'm sure I called him worse. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that was the nice thing I called him. I was like, really? That's it? So, no, I, I, I called you something else, really. But, yeah. <laughs> best thing uh, that ever happened to you. Best thing happened to me. Uh, I mean, he, uh, he really he jerked a knot in my butt and realized that I'm not in charge. And that, you know, if I want to do what I wanted to do, I had, I better, I better change real quick. Mm-hmm. But I spent the off season, you know, working my butt off the track and the coach bank worked all the way through and had a great junior season and uh, came back in my senior year with a different attitude. And uh, him and I became best, best buddies still this day. Wow. Uh, but he got me into college and I came back in 95 and that's when he offered me a job coaching DBs. And I was the head coach in waiting my last three years. I was bigger for him. He was the principal at the time and he was moving out. And I was ready to step in. I wasn't ready. I was way too young. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a great staff, same staff he had. We all together for the same amount of years. And <laughs> but long story short, a new principal came in, and uh, we didn't see eye to eye. He was a retired retired army colonel, and oh, he has had a different yes, he had a different look at things than I did. And 
So he came to me and said, I'll give you a first interview. And I said, first interview? First interview for what? Right. He says for a football coach. I said, I'm, I'm already the football coach. You know, it's just, you know, it's, it's already been done. All right. I decided who's the uh, football coach my my book. So it came interview time and I didn't get a job. Mm. And I was pretty upset. Found out in a bad way. I won't go there. I don't think we can talk about how I found out. I was on state championships and found out from somewhere else in a weird place. <laughs> I you know I, 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 I can tell you, I guess that this is still fitting. We're down state championships. Down in Louisville, and the night when the all coaches go out, we get around to hotels and parties, and we're seeing different people and just yep. big, you know. And somebody said, "Let's go by this other party." So, all right, we walked in the room and uh, got real quiet. Whole room's quiet. I went, well, "Why is it so quiet in here?" I was in the other coach's party for getting my job. <laughs> oh I no! Idea. They're like, "What are you doing here?" I'm like. Well, I'm in a weird place. <laughs> so that's how I found out. So I mean, that that's Monday like, I came back. That's like TV yeah. show, movie. Yes, type stuff, yes, right? I know. It was, it, was, it was amazing. So I came back that Monday, pretty upset, oh. and resigned and uh, started jumping and got courted by a lot of schools around the area. And a lot, a lot of people coaching, a lot of guys I played college ball with, coach. Uh, but I found Simon Kenton. We got him, Jeff Marksbury, out there. And he was a heck of a coach. He had a great vision. Uh, Simon Kenton was a doormat. It was a big school that when I was at Dayton, we'd go be all the time. Now Simon Kenton's a powerhouse down here. Wow. Uh, but I spent 15 years with him there. And that's really where I really got started coaching track. I was going to say, when did you start coaching track? Right. Yeah. Well, actually going back when I was here from 95 through 03, I was here coaching football. I was also assistant track coach. Hmm. So I was helping coach track there. The old man, Coach Binkley was running the show. He had his right. staff and I was kind of that extra young guy just came in and worked the relays and right. taped the kids and made water, whatever he needed me to do. You know? And, uh, but he taught me a lot. I was around him over those, those 10 years. So I got to Simon my first year there. The my I was defense coordinator, and my linebacker coach was the head track coach. Hmm. And didn't really have a lot of track knowledge. I didn't have a lot of track knowledge. I ran ran relays in the quarter and stuff. I didn't know much about you know, all the stuff going on. And he said, I need an assistant. I was like, you know what? He gets me out of the weight room in the offseason for football. Because <laughs> football there was a machine and went 365 sure. and we're, we grind it. So I said, I can get away for, for two months and get extra money and <laughs> and get paid I'm more. Right. <laughs> I love the head coach. I love the death. We worked well together, but we we needed a break from each other. You know, yeah. we, we, yeah. we strangle each other. <clears throat> so I did the first year as assistant with him, and the next year the girls' coach was having a baby. You know, starting a family up and resigned. I was like, well, I'll take the girls. And I started with fourteen girls and seven uniforms. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you know, so now I, I I can't go on and say how bad they treated me there because I'm not there anymore. I don't have to go back. <laughs> but in 15 years coaching at Simon Kin, I never got two nickels rubbed together. Mm. Never got a single squat penny from him. No, no and support. the head football coach, none. And the head football coach was my best buddy and my compadre was the AD. And he knew he could abuse me and get away with it. <laughs> he knew that. Uh, so anyway, so I did my first year as the girls coach and with 14 girls. I had a lot of success. I had some really tough, tough athletes and, uh, I uh, had a lot of fun with it. I realized coaching girls was amazing. Whole different game coaching girls. Yeah. Boys were hard. Yeah, girls, you, they you they wanted up, it. You grew up very football centric, so very you know boy in high school and in college. <laughs> right. Uh, so I got the girls, and I loved it. Girls, yeah. What what was kind of the major like? What was the eye opener for you? Like, oh wait, not only are they different, but that means I got to be maybe a little different. I, I, I'm not just. I'm never going to be different. Okay. <laughs> I'm always going to be me. I'm, huh? You know, I, I think they appreciated that. You know, they were getting attention from the football coach. That you know, big bad sure. football coach actually giving us the attention. Yeah. And and, and us, they wanted to be coached. They wanted to be or, girls want to be coached. Girls want to be organized. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's weird. I, I don't know why, but that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. Um. So the next year, the boys coach, uh, his wife got sick, mm -hmm. and he had to take time off to take care of his wife. So he. Uh, has stepped down. So I was like, give me them both. <laughs> wow. take them both. Yeah. And that's kind of where I started my, my, my track venture. But like I said, I did logistics. I grew the team and he got everybody in. Right. The football coach was anti-track. So I had to uh, beat him and beat him and abuse him. Like, now I'm gone, no kids on the football team are on track. It's crushing them. Wow. I mean, I had a hard time out there. But again, get the football guys out. I went to soccer practice every morning. They start before football practice. And so I had to watch them all the conditioning in the morning. I said, I drink coffee and go, okay, <laughs> recruit him, recruit him. Let's get him nice. to run track. Let's get him to run track. And just 
And I, I've always believed the best way to coach is, is building relationships with kids. Mm-hmm. Stay on their level, having fun with them. If it ain't fun, I don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. So I just recruited my butt off and just got these kids come out, come out, come out. And we grew over, you know, except between the guys and girls, we were over 150 kids. We serviced, I mean, more than anybody else in the school. And we never got a nickel to help us. We had to fundraise and sell cookie dough. I was a cookie, <laughs> selling, uh, cookie, cookie dough. selling machine out there. <laughs> uh, uh, so let's see, I spent out there, I guess, the first four years by myself, five years, and then Coach Bakley, the old coach from down here in Dayton, who won all the state champs. Coach Bakley, he coached here from right down, started here in 79, coached here through 04. In that time, he won eight state championships. Uh, I think back and look how many state runner ups and conference championships. Wow. Uh, we had two girls here that held the state record for the most state championship in the state of Kentucky. He coached. A girl I graduated with named Stephanie Edgar won, I believe, 13 or 14 state championships. Wow. In cross country, right? Dude. Phenomenal. She was a phenomenal <laughs> athlete. Tiny little thing. Uh, she went to the U of L, had a great career at U of L, married. Uh, another ground view of her. She, she lives on mobile, still coaches track. She's great. Awesome. Kids, her, her daughter actually state champion too in track and field. Oh, wow. Yeah, so a nice little lineage there. Yeah. Other girl, Adrian Hundemer. She graduated. Uh, see, I graduated in the 90s. I think she was 94. She graded, correct, I want to say 22 state championships. I think wow. I can look at the books. I, for a while, I thought it was 27. Somebody correct me, it was 22. Mm-hmm. I heard 20. But again, she held the state record up to two or three years ago. Wow. And she she ran the quarter and the three hundred hurdles back to back, state champion. Wow, that's tough. I would say at least three years, maybe for all four years of high school, she ran this back to back. Walk on the track, on the floor, back on for three hundred hurdles. Back on, and then again, <laughs> I've had kids try it since then. I told a story of my kids, athletes, my, my best athletes tried and just die and melt. They have no. nowhere, nowhere close to it. Right, you can't do that. It's impossible. <laughs> How do, and she did it at a championship caliber. Wow. So Adrian Hunter, I mean, so he, I mean, he just, he was a winner. Uh, but you know, he's an old guy. I mean, he's like, I guess he's about 78 now. And uh, you think he's 50. He's got energy and just <laughs> goes. When I ran high school, you couldn't get away because he ran with you. Wow. And like, and for sprinters, a light day was five miles because he was an old distance guy, an old oh, mile. Right. Yeah. Puerto Rico. Oh, God. So we did quarter, but I, on Friday for a meet, I ran a five mile run. I heard <laughs> my kids have five miles right now. They ain't coming back. You know, <laughs> they're all going home. Screw you, coach. I quit. <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway, I, uh, he was bouncing around. He left here in 04, and I left here in 04, and he was kind of bouncing around different places. Other guys that that he that ran for him, that coach, like uh, Ernie Brooks, coach at St. Henry, one of the best state championships over there, had Ernie over there, or Barry with him. Uh, kind of Greg Duty at Lloyd. But they all kept telling Barry no, trying to hold Barry back, basically. Because Barry, when Barry gets in, he's all in. He kind of is like a virus. He takes care of takes care of. <laughs> <laughs> and they would say, Barry, no, no, just you just coach this. You know, let me be the head coach. And I said, Barry, I said, dude, screw all that. Stop playing around. Get out here, Simon, and die with me. You know, it's like, why would I die out there? I said, well, I'll never. You're heck of a motivator. No. I said, Barry, I'll never say no to you. I'm not as dumb as those guys. I will say, you're the smartest guy I know. I'm logistics. I had a thrower's coach who'd been out there. For, I inherited He was an old buddy of mine from college. From the area and just and taught at the, uh, the uh, middle school. Still a throws coach to this day. He's one of the best in the area. He's great. Had a jumpers coach I inherited, a guy named Jim Pace. He's the air care pilot for you know local hospitals, <clears throat> but he's been he's still a jumpers coach. I uh, had Barry doing this. I had her, I had everybody. I coached the relays mm-hmm. when I could because Barry came in and just took everything. <laughs> I would tell the kids, you know, I'm the head coach on paper, but we're listening to him. You know, you're gonna listen to him because I do. <laughs> But I brought him in, and he was with me, and we just we, we were great together. I love the guy to death. A lot of people have have a uh, uh, you bury you love him or you fight him. You know, I'll, I'll leave it that. You know, he, but he's just a ball of energy. He's the most knowledgeable on track and field. He's, he's like a second dad to me. I love the guy to death. So me coming to school here, him and Coach Ritter were the guys that pulled me into Dayton right. and made me want to coach. Wow. So those guys were everything to me. So. Uh, but yeah, I try to joke with Barry all the time, but he's, he's now Simon Kenton's head coach where I was head coach when I left. Wow. They let him take over out his head coach now. So, so Tom, but he's another unique aspect of you, Jesse, is you're the football coach and the track coach at Dayton. You know, there's a lot of talk in the track world about specialization. I shouldn't say the track world, the athletic world about specialization versus multi-sport athletes. Um, I have to imagine since you're the football and track coach, you believe in multi-sport athletes. Uh, talk to us about your thoughts on 
at football players run and track and vice versa. How many kids actually come play football and run track, go to college for it? Why are they really doing it? For both? No, why, why are they playing football running track? They're doing it for fun. They're doing it for the competition. They're not right. being part of something bigger than them. They're not out here to go play college sports or play the next level. Right. So few actually have that dream or they have desire to, or to make it that far. Yeah, good Because, you know, it's one thing I, I as a track coach, I had a hard time grasp because I won a lot. And I always say, how do these kids come out and run all the time when they're last? Mm-hmm. And they come out every day and keep going. It, it took me a while for them to process that. But kids do it because they like competition, they like the game. It isn't always about playing the next level. So as far as specializing, if you get a kid that's a freak, you get a kid that's just, you know, he's a baseball pitcher and he's going to be, I mean, he's the real deal, specialize that kid. That's what's best for him to go for it. But in general, it's high school. Yeah. Play games, have fun, be a kid. Uh, we're a small school. If you specialize here, the other sports would suffer. All right. My kids right. play everything. You yeah, know, so. That, that's an interesting point you made there about, you know, the vast majority are not going to go on <laughs> to exactly. college for a sport and, and we actually tout that as coaches right um it's like hey you got to work hard you got to do this x y and z if you want a shot at going to college not everybody gets to go to college um and so that that's kind of an argument people use for specialization like if you want to be one of those one percent or whatever the number is that moves on from high school to college you better specialize but in reality you're looking at it in the majority level like hey well 99 percent aren't so shouldn't we as coaches and educators be there to help them have fun and enjoy. And right. uh, if you want to run track and football and play baseball, whatever, as much, you know, whatever we you can to help facilitate multi. Who, who are we catering to? You know, yeah. I, 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 I work for these kids. That's, that's why I look at things. We work for the kids. That's a good way so, of putting it is who do you right. cater to? Do you cater to the my, kids or do you cater to your ego? Yeah. yeah my, my, my star running back this year, he blew his ACL second game of the year. Uh, he's a track guy. And he came out of the track this year, and he threw shot put. It's a big, strong kid. You know, we'll find something else, put a shot put in your hand. Uh, he had great, great times running shot. He wasn't a killer at it, but you know, he had fun and competed with it. Mm-hmm. But he came out every day because it was a former competition. Mm-hmm. Now, he's going to play college football. He's going to own Thomas Moore. He's got a scholarship to go play and everything. Uh, but, again, baseball season was happening, too. And our, my, my defense coordinator on football team is the baseball coach. So, can I play baseball, too? I'm like, heck, yeah, you can play baseball, too. You can do it all. Yeah. We have guys traditionally that play in the band and on the football team. So at halftime, you look out, see a guy in the pads marching in the halftime show. Right. It's always been that way. We got a lot of flack of that over the years. We got flack when I was a kid. <laughs> I'm going to probably have it next year with a couple of guys going to play football because I recruit everybody. I go get everybody and anybody, every walk of life, man. Football's drag. It's, it's for everybody. Yeah. So well, do you see, you know, when you're going to your um, football coaching conventions and meetings and things like that, and you're just, you know, rapporting with other football coaches, is there still, so I, you know, I get insulated in my bubble of track and field. I mean, it's all, you know, my social media and, you know, basically my life, right. It's all, I'm, I'm only talking to track people. So I get very, I'm in that box, right. I don't talk to many track or many football coaches. Is, is the sentiment of, specializing for football, you know, doing, making sure you're doing spring ball and spring lifting. Don't worry about track. We're going to get you fast. Is that actual reality for the majority of football coaches? Or is that something, you know, sometimes we like to be martyrs, right? It's like, Oh, you know, you should be running track. Everybody hates track. You should be running it. And maybe that's not even reality. What is the actual kind of, as far as your circle, the reality of coaches, football coaches who want their kids to not run many football coaches coach track anymore. There's a few, a few of us left, you know, it's just about two or three of us left in the whole area here. Uh, most football coaches now, football is year round and they want them in the weight room. They want them with them all the time. And I understand that hundred percent. I fought that fought assignment again, trying to get kids out, you know, on, on football team with the head coach. And so what I did, I had two practice times. I had a three o'clock time after school for everybody who wasn't a football player at four 30 when the football team was lifting weights and they got outside to do their agilities and sprints. I have track practice. So I'd pull the football guys out of that and we'd have track practice. Those guys, the early guys would carry over need be relay guys wanted to work together. And that's why I did things <laughs> uh, here. When I got here, I come to the door and I said, all right, guys, football team, right in the off season. I said, are you a baseball player? Hands it up. Yep. Baseball. baseball. Okay. You guys go stand over there. You guys, you're on the track team. So what? <laughs> I like that. You didn't ask who's on the track team. You said, okay, the rest of you, you're on the track team. (laughs) You are on the track team. So all of a sudden baseball team grew. We got more guys out of baseball, which is great because baseball has some numbers. A guy who didn't didn't raise his hand was like, oh, I messed up. No, I meant I'm baseball too. (laughs) I'm baseball now. (laughs) 
So I, the, the, the downside of it was, as my first time doing that, I walked in and went, okay, I got 25 throwers. What do I do with 25 throwers? Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't have the facilities, I don't have the way to jump. I went out and just waited through them. And went, okay, fired, you're fired, you're fired, back in the weight room, back in the weight room. Mm -hmm. And it kind of did that divide there. Uh, it was, it was an experiment, but I tell you what, I found a lot of kids who fell in love with track this year. Kids who just never, never, never thought they'd run before, they got a taste of it and they just became track nuts. Awesome. So I'm just, just going to influence kids and, and expose them to the better things. You know, so, on, the, on the college level, as much as I would love a football player who had a track background to run track, I, like, I kind of get it on the college level, no matter what, whether you're at a Thomas Moore, Campbellsville, Florida State, University of Kentucky, doesn't matter. I get it there, right? I mean, there's salaries involved and uh, maybe scholarships uh, you know, involved. On the high school level, I don't get it at all. I mean, if you're a football coach, I would have to venture to guess 90 plus percent of football coaches are teachers as well. I know there are a few in this world that it weirdly you only coach football on the high school level, but I, I know it exists. And probably 90% of that group is all in Texas. Probably <laughs> uh, some in Cincinnati too, though. There's some huge, you know, you, you big know, schools in Ohio. Yeah. It's huge yeah, football yeah, yeah. In Ohio. Yeah, yeah. It's a wide <laughs> river. I said, don't, don't cross that river. It's wide. It's <laughs> a good point. Good big point. Schools over there. <laughs> but on the high school level, you know, you're an educator first, you're a history teacher, PE teacher, science teacher first. It doesn't make sense that a football coach would hold back someone who wants to run track or even encourage them to run track. I, I just don't get it. It doesn't make sense. Right. It makes no sense because, I mean, it's competition. Mm -hmm. I want my kids competing. You know, I mean, wrestling, football coaches hate wrestling because they got to lose weight. You know, my, my world wrestler guy, we don't have wrestling here, but the last one's like, just never go down, guys. Just keep going up. But wrestle, go compete. Right. It's raw competition. It's you against yourself, it's you against the world. You know, it, 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 it's, it's awesome. You know, yeah. you get a you smart body you never known exists. Yeah. I mean, tracks, tracks it's a whole other game. That, it's, that's, it's the original sport. That, that's a great skill, learning how to compete. Yes. Not, not, you didn't say learning how to win. That's a byproduct of what you did the effort right. you put in. And, and sometimes luck, right? Like with wrestling, who you get paired up against. and uh, like right, that, right. Right. Uh, But we just had the uh, U.S. Air Force Academy, their whole staff on a few weeks ago. And they kind of talked about that, you know, their, their job or is track coaching, you know, they're coaching track throwers, jumpers, runners, et cetera. But they talked about because they're at a service Academy, a lot of their responsibility is helping young men and women grow up learning how to compete. Like if you, uh, these guys and gals are going to be the ones that are going to be in the fighter planes fighting for us and, you know, on the ground, well, wouldn't you want that person to be competitive and to learn and know how to win and how to compete? And I was like, well, that makes a lot of sense. In this instance, the, the, the example you're given, like learning how to compete is important whether you are going to be in athletics in the next step or not. If you're a, a teacher, it's important that you know how to how to compete. Business, it's important that you know how to compete. Uh, any job. Capitalism. I mean, capitalism, Mike, it, it's all based on competition. Right. The strong, the strong wins. There's winners and losers. Right. I mean, that, that's our system the way it is. Mm -hmm. we're, I, mean, we're, I love it. We're the only country in the world that has high school sports. Mm -hmm. you go to europe you don't play high school sports you play club sports no right. affiliation right but why it's, it's part of the education process I always said you don't learn math and science and english in schools right we use those as our vehicles to teach you how to be the right type of citizen for you know, success and we have sports as well which is is, is key mm -hmm. yeah. you know one is it's that carrot that says hey you, you, you want to play sports take care of your grades <laughs> number two but all the stuff we learn from, from football i mean my core values my, number one is family mm -hmm. you know we basically have fire we're the green devils so he's acting in fire. So my core values are family, which is everything. You know, right. gets, yeah, I love each other. I people each other. Integrity. Yes. I want high character kids, high character employees, high character people, right? Relentlessness. Mm -hmm. Keep like on that. coming, baby. I and like again, know, know where we come from. You understand our history of our school, like football. When I came here, two years before, the year before I got here, they had to cancel the last two games of the year. They had to forfeit them, not enough kids to play. Oh, no. They won 15 games in the past 11 years before I got here. Oh, it was the worst program in the States. All right. So relentlessness is knowing where you come from, just keep on coming. Mm -hmm. And of course, at the end, I, I, E is enthusiasm. Again, it ain't fun. I don't want to do it. You know, if I'm not smiling, something, something's wrong here. We're playing games. So, <laughs> but again, we're teaching you guys values and how to be men and how to handle, you know, how to cope and deal with adversity because our kids don't handle adversity very well down here. You, you mentioned you don't, you, you are who you are, meaning you don't coach the girls differently than you coach the boys. How do you take that same 
that, that, that fire that you talked about, you know, family intensity, relentlessness, and um, don't tell me, don't tell me, dang it. That's, that's how bad my memory is. Oh, what is the E? Oh. Fun, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. I, I would be kicked off your team in a heartbeat. Uh, how do you take that type of attitude? Like that's a very football thing, right? The fire, the FIR. It is. How do you it take is. That to track. It carries right over because a lot of the same guys, a lot of the same guys. It was really needs a lot of the same guys, and we live by these morals, these, these values, past years. I'm really installing these guys, and they're they're buying it hardcore because you know so bad before these kids are loving the new and loving the success, and they're, they're bought in. It carries over to the other kids who don't play football who are on the track team. Mm. The concept of, of of a family and a brotherhood. And a team concept and take care of each other, compete in and root each other on. Somebody screws up, don't yell, pat him on the ass. I'll put him on the butt. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so. So, what, where do you, you're in your, you just finished your second year? Is that right? I finished my second year, yes. Second year. So, second year. Where, where do you go from here, man? I mean, obviously, you know, you got a lot of experience that you've been drawn on from the other schools and even from your other past positions and even from your college days and your high school days when you were there at Dayton, what, what, how are you continuing to like, what's year three look like you, as you're putting things in, in stages and continuing to grow? Oh, I mean, honestly, it's, it's, I mean, going back, I came here to coach football. I mean, I know it's a track thing, but I, I, I came here to be the football coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also came here to be in this, into administration. So I'm, I'm the Dean of students. Yeah. So that keeps me really, really, really busy. So that's, uh, that, that comes my whole day. I, they thought in the beginning, oh, this is a cushy job for the football coach. No. <laughs> no. That's the driver's head portion. Hard. <laughs> it is a, it's, a, it's a bear. Uh, but with that, I came here to coach football, too, to save our, save our school, basically. Mm. Uh, our school, athletic, all the sports were down. Basketball was down. Baseball could barely fill the field. Uh, it, the girls' sports have been solid. Track has been really solid for the girls. Softball is really solid. The girls were just this of the region here recently. Um, but the whole thing was, how can we get, get – Re- reignite our school so i once met, met my buddies all my high school buddies that i played for high school with that are coaching in, in different aspects and things that i wanted to do uh, as far as our type of office i run and i hired all dayton guys i went and hired all guys who graduated from here if i could i had a couple other guys who were outside just a couple uh cedric pyramid running back for the Bengals. Mm-hmm. another story but i hired cedric i uh, met him outside mckinton uh, but he came, he retired and went to get the coaching. So I brought him, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> but I hired a Dayton guys because we're trying to reignite Dayton, get people interested in everything going on. Right. So we had a great first year of football. We, uh, we won four games. We were four and one at one point. We should have been five and oh, we kind of lost that first one on, on, on the fudge, but, uh, but first time they had a winning season or, or started out of anything in you know, wow. two decades. So the baseball job came open and we got my buddy's the defense coordinator. He graduated with me. He's now the baseball coach. I'm the track coach and the football coach. And we just recently just hired a guy that I coached back in the 90s to be our basketball coach. So we had all these Dayton guys were bringing in, the whole small football staff was Dayton guys. And that, that's pretty much what was the thing, was just getting it going. So we're, we're on the way up. I, I, I got love- six years of retirement, and we're bringing everybody in. We, we had a goal. I, I love we that. We want to make Dayton respectable. I love Bring that. Bring back in and be competitive. Yeah. When, when, when I talk to college coaches that are alums of their college, like that, I always think that's so special. It's like, oh man, when you recruit and you tell a kid how great your school is, like you got the greatest proof there is. You went to school there, you know? So to bring Dayton guys back to Dayton to coach really many versions of themselves, right? That, that, that 16 year old is who you were when you were 16. How cool is it, Mike? Me and my buddies get together and we get to coach our high school football team. I mean, we're, we're living the dream. And with that, I get to coach track. And, you know, I just, it, it's, I'm in heaven, absolute pure heaven. So it's, it's, it's a dream come true. Man, I love that. And, you know, to bring it back full circle, Jesse, I, I love your attitude. Uh, first of all, I love two attitudes that you continue to exude here. One is community pride, you know, and, and certainly even if you're not in your own where you grew up community, having, you know, affecting where you are, where your two feet are right now today, that's a big deal. And you're getting to do that in the community that you grew up in, your family grew up in, your mom and dad are alone. I mean, what a legacy right there in Dayton. And then two, you know, coming back to the uh, kick some asphalt track meet, I love the no excuses attitude, right? You know, we, we, we do a lot of these as coaches, the FIRE, we do a lot of these slogans, you know, no excuses and, you know, right, right. fear and all this kind of stuff. Uh, and those are great. And, and some people certainly respond to the words and the, the signs and the banners, but we all 
respond to action. And so you had every excuse in the world. No, there is no track facility. Uh, well, I want to do this street meet, but I'd have to build a sand pit. We don't have one of those, so we can't do this. You build a sand pit. <laughs> uh, you know, you're going to have a freaking steeplechase next year. I mean, I, I love that attitude of no excuses, get it done, figure it out, all because your goal is for these kids to have the experience while they're there at your high school, at your high school, you know, literally your high school. <laughs> um, and growing up, we, we, we didn't have facilities. I mean, it's, 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 I grew up watching Rocky, you know, Rocky and the Russians. I remember went to Russia and he trained in, in the thing. That's kind of, that's, that's kind of dated. We don't have the updated facilities. We have none of those stuff everybody else has. So we just kind of just, you know, make it happen. You know, take what you got and, you know, Mr. Make it happen. I was, you know, this is the way it is. So that's just kind of instilled in our, in our way of life down there in our culture. So, but with it, I mean, it's just, three me was, you know, let's go have some fun. You know, and 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 race. I mean, I really, I everybody made a big deal at the end, but I didn't think it was this big of a deal. Like, we're gonna go and try and invite some teams down here and race in our streets. You know, why not? And uh, everybody's made. I mean, it's, it's it's taken off, obviously. So. Well, my hope with having you on the show is that there are other coaches that are listening right now that are in the same boat. They don't have a facility, and they've always wondered could I pull it off? Well, the, the circle around my uh, uh, parking lot, it's 600. That's not a 400. I can't figure it out. Uh, my hope is that maybe you've kind of written the blueprint, if you will, for others to do it their way. So not everybody's going to have a 600. Maybe they're doing 300 meter repeats. I don't know. I don't care. Just do something. Uh, one of the things we See, do. You're creating competition. If we're going outside and creating a, a, an obstacle course. Yeah. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Let's go and create some different events. It's like field day for, for the middle school you're taking outside. Yeah. Well, what Remember events are we going to do? Remember field right? day? Oh, man. Yeah, I love of course. Field that was awesome. Oh, I love field you know, day. Elementary field day is the greatest. You know, but I, I just, that's kind of what we're looking at. This is a giant field day. Yeah. Let's come down here and let's get in the streets and we'll use track as our guide of how we do things. You know, awesome. this is kind of our, our vehicle here. But just this is comp competition. Again, the key thing was something different. Yeah. Every meet's the same. Everything's the same. And that's what the kids, they, they, at the beginning, they, they questioned it. At the end, they loved it. Yeah. It's the coolest thing ever. We can't wait to come back next year. And Did you see kids like who aren't on your team that got to see that? That oh, now yes. showed interest? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had kids, I had coaches, kids, parents come to me from other schools and just going on and on about it. It was the nicest thing ever. You know, I was like, well, it's good. We're going to do this every year. And it's great because it's the first meet of the year. Mm -hmm. We have a, a calendar meeting where all the kids get together and we sit down at some restaurant. And one guy gets out in the middle and kind of guys are, all right, here we go, this date and this date. And I can forget the first day I gave my mind the week before that, you know, it's, it's, I want to be first. So that was that first meet of the year. It's training time. Come on out, have some fun. Kids that never ran track before, they're all nervous and worried about all the structure and everything on track meet. Hey, it's a great place to break the ice. Yeah. Come out, yeah. throw them a couple of competitions around here, kids, and we relax, you know, get them to go because it was real stress free. Yeah. It was a stress free environment, you know, oh, again, uphill, downhill, over potholes. We got for stray cats. <laughs> Yeah, one car said one car pulled out right in the middle. Oh, yeah, of the yeah. Door. What was that? Yeah. <clears throat> My biggest fear is several houses have driveways. And one, there's like a little row of government houses right on the edge of our campus there. And there's like a big long driveway, trying three buildings. And we had everything coned off and I had people staged with radios. And somebody went on the driveway, no problem. Radio, we'll make sure that it's coming, we'll let you out, get you back in. Well, this lady did not want to wait for us. And she came out to my, I'm right in the middle of the street, uh, right, right where the finish would be. I'm there about half of the race. And I look up and I see a car driving down the street. I'm like, oh my God. And it's getting faster and faster. And this is not a real big area. And she turns up the hill, which is a one way street. She's going to run one and just, because we're running on the inside and she's flying on the outside. And I'm, I'm literally running as fast as I can chase this car. <laughs> oh my God, everybody get out of the way. <laughs> Car goes up the street. The guys pull the cones. I get better to get her out. I look back, and our one of our city cops are parked down there. And I see them jump in his car and take off the other way. He got her. <laughs> yeah. uh, so nobody that, get My fear was like a car's gonna pull out, and oh my god, someone's gonna run over. You know, and now I gotta go with lawsuits and everything else here. Street meets a total flop. You know? Right? Yeah, yeah. We would not have you on the <laughs> no podcast. No more street meets. Right, yeah, we, right. We wouldn't have you on the podcast if you killed someone. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd probably be doing for a job right now. <laughs> So, well, man, Jesse, I'm just super pumped and proud of you for the positive impact that you're making in your community, literally your community, you know, from growing up there. Um, you know, I, we have such a big belief of the power of the positive power a coach can make in their area, right? And you're doing it in football and track in your area. No excuses. You get it done. 
uh, you have written the blueprint on how to do the street meet. We've heard about street vaults for pole vaulting. Well, now we've got the <laughs> blueprint for the street meet, man. Uh, you can't steal his, his slogan. You got to come up with your own original. No more. He, he's going to take, keep and uh, kick your, kick some asphalt. You got to come up with your own uh, cool one. Uh, but man, I'm just so proud and happy for what you do for those kids. You've made a fan. I'm a, I'm a green devil fan. Now uh, we're going to make sure we connect next year. I, I don't have much excuse. You're, you're kind of down the road from me. Uh, I, I want to come see this thing, man. I, I'm, I'm a, I, I just want to see this for my own self now. This is going to be awesome. And you're, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's going to get better. Oh, so. man. I love it. I love it. Well, Jesse, man, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, I know you're busy. You've got summer school and football practice starting and season and, and everything. So I'm just so thankful you would uh, spend your time and energy and attention with us today. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Jesse. And thank you for being here and listening. Again, I'm just so, so pumped that uh, you know, we can help spread and share new people for you to connect with. It's a very specific reason why we call this the Connections Podcast. We wanted to introduce coaches from around the world that maybe you wouldn't have a chance to, uh, to interact with normally. And certainly we had a winner today, man. Jesse is, uh, again, he wrote the blueprint. Uh, so if you're out there listening, you don't have a track, Unfortunately, you now have no excuses to find some way to make it happen for your school so kids can, can compete at home. That's a big deal. Uh, so uh, reach out. Uh, if, if you want to talk to Jesse, reach out to me and uh, I'll give, get you Jesse's email. And I know, you know we've talked, he'd, be, he'd love to help you and kind of just give you the, you know, maybe the ins and outs of what you might need for some of the logistics. He, he's a big logistics guy if you didn't catch on there. Uh, but he would <laughs> certainly be there to help you out. And uh, for sure, help out by spreading the word if you uh, found value value in today's episode, I'm pretty sure someone else in your network would uh, provide that would receive value as well. So hit it on the Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, I don't know, whatever else we're cool in social media today. Sometimes email and text message works good too. So uh, shoot a link out to a friend and spread the good word. And again, appreciate you guys being here until next week. Have a great day. Appreciate you guys.